So in, in many ways, we did see the underlying uh, factors which could explain the recovery or not in China. So the first quarter, things bounced back quite sharply. You know, you had 2.2 percent quarter on quarter growth. Since then, things have slowed. And the main reason is uh, the real estate sector. They're there. Uh, they have not been a comprehensive response to the problem in the real estate sector. And that has weighed both on investment in the real estate sector and consumer confidence. So one would have hoped that after China reopened, you know, things would bounce back, consumption would really uh, come back very strongly. But that has in some sense been undermined by confidence not coming back because of the real estate sector. Because a lot of the uh, wealth is in the real estate sector. So when that has not been resolved, that has been a big uh, headwind for growth in China. So that's why we have growth at, you know, at five percent, which is what the government had announced as around five percent their target. Mm -hmm. But we see uh, risks of, you know, downside risks of growth, and so we have for next year we have 4.2 percent, mm -hmm. and which is largely led by continuing weakness in the real estate sector. And if that sector, if there is a comprehensive response to that problem, then you could see some upside risks. So the thing about the Chinese fiscal response and what most people have been saying is that it, it's piecemeal. Yes. They're not resorting back to the old playbook and they're not going to um, the old playbook of financing via local governments. Mm -hmm. Does that change in your view? Is there any level that there any growth slowdown that will actually warrant a bigger response out of Chinese policymakers, or are they going to be cautious this time around because they don't want to build up more leverage in the system? Yeah, I think it would be fair to say that they have taken a decision that leverage was too high in the system and they want to lower it. They also seem to be uh, taking a decision that the real estate sector was too large and they want to make it smaller and more sustainable. So to that extent, I think we have to think of the policy response in two ways. One is whether there's a policy response aimed at addressing the real estate sector. And if that is done, then you really don't need the macro support because you'll see a, you know, a kind of a virtual cycle coming back, mm -hmm. you know, confidence coming back, consumption picking up and so on. Yeah. The old model where they provided support for investment through infrastructure, that has run its course. Mm -hmm. So right now they need to think in terms of well, how do we boost consumption to have a more sustainable recovery going forward. And but, then, you know, a lot of this just sounds structural to me, not, not cyclical. The rest of the world we're dealing with, I guess you could say cyclical headwinds, but in China it is actually structural. You've got structural issues with property. You've got structural issues with youth unemployment. Yes. Those, those require bigger reforms. Absolutely. So in fact, if you look at what we have done, we have projected our medium term growth in China at 3.4% in 2028. Mm. And that reflects the fact that there are structural factors at play. Productivity has been declining aging, the population is aging. Mm. So these are structural factors which you need to address. Mm. But more importantly, where we are today, if you want to say, break it up into cyclical with structural, I think right now they have to address the real estate problem in a very comprehensive way. Yeah. You know, they need to be providing more support. They need to resolve the developer's problem, right? Mm. You have you have developers which are not in good shape, and then you have developers which are in, in much better shape. So they need mm. to resolve that sector properly. Yeah. And once they do that, you can see growth coming back. Yeah. But beyond that, there is a, the other fact like yeah. productivity and aging which come into play. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.